In this Dragon's Dogma 2 video, we're going to be talking about the loot system of the game, weapons, armor, rings, equipment, etc., things that you would find in the game, how that loot system works, and how it's different and similar to some other RPGs out there. So if you want to know more about how you get loot, kind of loot you get in Dragon's Dogma, systems that it uses, watch on for some helpful information. So the first thing we're going to discuss is how the loot is distributed in Dragon's Dogma. They have both random and static loot. That means that certain places will always have a specific item in a lot of cases and that some enemies will have random loot that can drop and other enemies will have like a fixed drop. Also, there are vendors in the game that will always have like a plethora of things you can buy and sometimes their inventory updates depending on what you're doing throughout the game. So you can have both random and static loot that's distributed throughout the world and it really just depends on what you're trying to get. The second thing worth mentioning is that weapons and armor in Dragon's Dogma are not equal, meaning that there are definitively better weapons and armor than, you know, other pieces. This isn't Dark Souls where every weapon is viable and some weapons are just balanced in a different way and maybe they attack faster if they do less damage, etc. It's kind of a Final Fantasy system, you know, where you get the wood sword and then the iron sword and then the silver sword and then the gold sword. There are better and better equipments throughout the game and it is true that there are some equipments that are similar to each other with different effects, but there are definitively better ones than others. So you're not going to be like making a build with the first sword you find in the game. You're going to be swapping that out for something better, you know, very quickly as soon as you can. So just keep that in mind. Additionally, there are some weapons that have inherent status effects on them. Like they can set enemies on fire by attacking or set like other status effects. And also note that equip weight on weapons is also important how much they weigh, um, because, you know, as we've discussed in other videos, stamina management is such a huge part of Dragon's Dogma. You know, just because a weapon does more damage, maybe it's extremely heavy, um, and that just doesn't work for you. So there are other factors to, you know, keep in mind, but generally speaking, you're going to be going with the one that does the most damage. And another thing worth noting is that each vocation has a unique weapon type that's only available to their vocation. So a lot of like your vocation comes down to the weapons that you're using. For instance, archers are the only ones that can use bows. Magic archers have a separate type of bow available to them. And thieves have daggers and they're the only ones who can use daggers. So if you're playing a thief, you're just on the lookout for better daggers. And that's what your strategy is. And, you know, if you're playing an archer, you're going to look out for better bows. And the play style of your vocation is obviously revolves around that weapon type. Kind of reminds me of Monster Hunter in that sense, where you pick a weapon and that's kind of the play style. You don't really have a class, but in this sense, you pick a vocation, which kind of tells you the weapon that you're playing. And there are only three exceptions to this, which is that the warrior has hammers and great swords, but these are unique to the warrior. No other class can use them. The fighter has maces and swords, which again are unique to the fighter. No other class can use them. And then you have the warfare, which can use a mix of different weapons from different classes. So that's the third exception. And also something that I find particularly Monster Hunter-like about the weapon and armor system of Dragon's Dogma is that you upgrade your weapons and armor by farming materials from enemies in the game. So you're going to be able to go to the blacksmith and upgrade your equipment to make it stronger and deal more damage. And depending on what weapon you have, it's going to determine like what materials you need in order to upgrade it. And then you'll have to go farm those enemies to get that upgrade material and you'll have to, have to spend some gold as well. And some of these upgrades that you need from enemies are not, you know, fixed. Like, they're random drops, and sometimes you have to, like, cut their tail off or break a part of them, like their face, in order to get, like, a horn or something like that. So you are going to have to do a bit of farming to upgrade your equipment. And the other thing, again, that reminds me of Monster Hunter, this whole video is about Monster Hunter suddenly, um, is that there are different upgrade paths that you can choose for your weapon that will focus on specific aspects of the weapon. For instance... They might make the weapon heavier, but increase the physical damage. Or maybe they increase the magic damage of the weapon, but not the physical damage. Maybe they make it lighter, but also give you more knockdown power. So there are different ways that you can upgrade your equipment in Dragon's Dogma that will impact, you know, the properties of your weapon. So you're not only going to have to, like, decide on the weapon you want to use, but then how you want to upgrade it. And that's a big part of the game as well. And something else I want to mention about like weapons, armor, shields, etc. is that there is a lot of behind the scenes mechanics related to these things that the game does not tell you. Sometimes you'll be using some equipment and you'll just find that you're doing really well with it, but you're not sure why. Maybe you're not taking as much stamina damage when you're blocking as you were with some other shield. Or maybe this weapon that you're using does way more damage for some reason than the previous one, even though their attack power is like the same. So there's 
kind of like a, this hidden thing in the game where you kind of need to use your intuition and go like, hey, this is working for me. I, I need to use this or I need to figure out why this is working. And obviously we'll be filling out the wiki with these sort of mechanics as we learn them because obviously it takes a while to do that. But that will be there on the wiki when we have all that information to help you sort of understand why that's happening for you. And there are also damage types in Dragon's Dogma. So like some weapons deal strike damage, some weapons deal slash damage. And that can be more effective or less effective to an enemy depending on what their resistances are. For instance, if you're attacking like a golem or something that's really hard, slashing might not be as good as strike. Or maybe like a skeleton might be weaker to strike damage than slashing. So there are some nuances there also. And also, like there are other damage types beyond strike and slash. Like a weapon, there are some weapons in the game that maybe have like ice damage or fire damage or something like that. So you can find you know, bows or melee weapons that have these other damage types on them that make them kind of separate from other weapons, which just, you know, adds a little bit more variety to the game. And the last thing to cover is that there are two ring slots in the game. You can equip two rings at once, and you'll find these throughout the game, either by buying them or from doing quests or from feeding enemies or looting treasure chests. And it's been a while, honestly, since I've gone back to a game that's had two ring slots. Elden Ring's kind of spoiled me in the later Souls games with four. I remember the original Dark Souls game had two as well, and that was kind of rough. So you're going to have to make some hard choices about what rings you want to use in the game, and obviously we'll have recommendations for that in our guides coming forward. Keep that in mind that you're only going to have two rings, so you're going to have to make tough decisions about that. So all in all, I really like the loot system of Dragon's Dogma. It reminds me of like somewhere between Monster Hunter and Dark Souls, where you definitely have better weapons than Dark Souls, like in terms of upgrades, there's clearly definitively better ones, but also there are a lot of different viable options and... You know, you can farm some weapons, you can buy weapons, you can go to certain places to get weapons. You're getting loot and gear like all over the place and it's just a really good system in my opinion. It has something for everyone and I do really enjoy upgrading my equipment and going to farm upgrades. You do fight a lot of monsters in the game, shockingly. Um, so getting these upgrades and materials for them happens quite easily I find, like unless you're upgrading many, many different weapons, then it's not too much work. It's not like super grindy I don't feel like. And it can be a lot of fun too. It's just kind of relaxing to go out on the landscape, kill some enemies and farm some stuff. So hope that you guys enjoy that loot system. But I'm just curious for those of you out there who weren't familiar with this loot system, for those of you who haven't played Dragon's Dogma before, what do you make of it? Is it something that you think that you will enjoy? Is it missing something? Is it too complicated? Let me know in the comments below.